Serious complications of urological surgery include deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE, together referred to as venous thromboembolism, VTE, as well as major bleeding. Decisions regarding pharmacologic thromboprophylaxis in urological surgery involve a trade-off between decreased risk of VTE and increased risk of bleeding. The risks and benefits of thromboprophylaxis for urological surgery depend on both patient-specific and procedure-specific factors. Clinicians and patients must trade off a reduction in VTE against the potential increase in bleeding. Although investigators have not addressed the issue specifically for urological procedures, high quality evidence from randomized trials has shown that pharmacological prophylaxis with, for example, low molecular weight heparins, decreases the risk of VTE in patients undergoing abdominal or pelvic surgery by approximately 50%. Best estimates for low molecular weight heparins also suggest, however, an increase in the risk of post-operative major bleeding by approximately 50%. Evidence regarding baseline risks of VT and bleeding in the absence of any prophylaxis remains limited. And therefore, decisions regarding the use of prophylaxis currently involve large uncertainty. Indeed, there exists substantial practice variation in the use of thromboprophylaxis in urology, both within and between countries. In our Guidelines of Guidance article, we have summarized the available guidelines addressing the use of thromboprophylaxis in urology. To identify guidelines addressing thromboprophylaxis in urology, we performed a comprehensive Medline search from January 2000 until end of 2015. In addition, we manually searched the websites of international and national urologic societies and their associated journals. Neither the primary search strategy nor subsequent searches of society websites identified any formal guidance on thromboprophylaxis specific to urology. Review of this body of literature identified a single guidance document, the American Urological Association AUA, Best Practice Statement, that made specific recommendations. This, however, was not a formal guideline. In 2008, the AUA Practice Guideline Committee did not find enough high-quality data to support a formal evidence-based guideline on the prevention of BTE. As a result, the committee developed and in 2011, reviewed a best practice statement for patients undergoing urological surgery. The AUA best practice statement made recommendations for the use of thromboprophylaxis based primarily on patient risk stratification. The statement did not explicitly present the recommendations for the duration prophylaxis. However, it implied the general use of in-hospital prophylaxis only, as the document suggested post-discharge enoxaparin or warfarin for selected very high-risk patients only. In the absence of urology-specific guidelines, authors also reviewed guidelines pertaining to urologic surgery from the UK's NICE guidelines, the German Association of Scientific Medical Societies, the American College of Chest Physicians, the ACCP, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, and the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council. These mentioned guidelines, such as guidelines by NICE and ACCP, typically suggest extended thromboprophylaxis for high-risk abdominal or pelvic surgery for up to four weeks post-discharge. The limitation is that they do not clearly clarify what these high-risk procedures are. These guidelines were largely based on indirect as opposed to procedure-specific evidence. Therefore, their recommendations often conflicted each other. Authors also reviewed guidelines on perioperative management of antithrombotic agents. In principle, there are four options to manage use of antithrombotic agents during the perioperative period. One, to defer surgery until antithrombotic agents are not needed anymore. Two, to stop antithrombotic agents prior to surgery and restart sometime after. Three, continue through the surgical procedure. Or four, bridge antithrombotic agents. Guidelines addressing perioperative management of antithrombotic agents in surgery preceded recent large, rigorous randomized trials. Randomized trial evidence published since these guidelines has shown that bridging increases the incidence of bleeding without reducing thrombosis. These trials have an indirect bearing on patients receiving anticoagulation for venous thrombosis and suggest withholding bridging for most patients is probably a good idea. With respect to antiplatelet agents, a large, rigorous recent randomized trial has demonstrated that these agents also increase bleeding without reducing arterial thrombotic events. 
This article summarizes guidelines pertaining to post-surgery thromboprophylaxis and perioperative management of antithrombotic agents. Because current guidelines are not procedure specific, their guidance may result in the undertreatment of procedures with high risk of VTE and low risk of bleeding, and the overtreatment of procedures with low risk of VTE. The European Association of Urology Guidelines Office has commissioned an ad hoc guideline panel that will present a formal thromboprophylaxis guideline for specific urological procedures and patient risk factors.